Hi and welcome to another edition of the Vinyl Record Collector. I'm just going to uh, talk today a little bit about uh, one of, well it's an iconic album. It's by um, the greatest band probably of all time. Uh, you may dispute that, um, but I'm from Liverpool so what can I say? You know, the Beatles is, uh, is the band that I grew up with and I can remember when the Beatles uh, broke up. Crikey, you know, we all sat around and uh, and we just wept. Uh, well, I was at school in uh, 1970 and, and kind of it was all over. And, and I think we all believed that they were just going to go on through our whole life. And uh, I think that's why a lot of people were so badly affected when John Lennon died. And uh, it's one of those occasions where probably you can remember where you were and what you were up to when you heard the news. Uh, I was... Um, I was away at college at the time and uh, I was just absolutely devastated, couldn't believe it because I think up until when that happened we honestly believed they were all going to get back together again. Uh, but anyway, um, happier times um, when I was uh, just a kid and I was at a youth club uh, growing up in uh, Swindon and my parents had moved out to um, a, a private housing estate. We moved from a council house in place called Park North in Swindon to uh, a, count, uh, a private estate called Covingham and um, one of my best friends at school um, was uh, a guy called Steve and uh, I had a real crush on Steve's sister uh, Elaine and um, this record that I'm going to uh, talk about just takes me absolutely back to listening to this um, in uh, Steve's parents house because I, I guess I would have been uh, probably about 12, 13 at the time um, and it's this album Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band and the, my copy is a bit uh, kind of moth eaten and uh, I keep all my albums, I don't know if you guys do this as well but I keep all my albums in uh, polythene um, covers just to stop them deteriorating any further. I'm going to take it out of this because it doesn't look great on the camera. Um, I've got several copies in here that I've just collected over the years, but I've actually sadly only got one on cover in here. And uh, something I, I discovered the other night, which I was watching a fantastic documentary on BBC Two um, about this album. And apparently it was the first one that had the lyrics printed on the cover. The first album ever to do that. So there we are. They were um, uh, quite something. The Beatles. This this covers quite an early, uh, quite an early cover. I think it's it's got quite a, a wide spine. But this is this is a capital. This is not um, a parlophone version. This is a capital cover. And um, what's it got inside? It's got just a plain uh, a plain uh, paper liner. And um, the cover itself has got quite a lot of ring wear. Look, it's an honest record. To, I'll, I'll be quite straight with you. I bought this from a thrift store for, for 99 cents. And uh, I couldn't believe it when I found it. In fact, uh, I, I found all three of the uh, copies that I have, the used copies that I have at the thrift store. There's the amazing interior of this album. It's just... It's just a joy, isn't it? It was, uh, say, very much of its era. So 1967, um, there we were. I was, I was uh, 12, uh, going on 13 when I heard it. And um, my mate Steve was a little bit older and his parents had quite a nice record player. And, and uh, um, in any case, he was he was kind of a cool, cool friend. He, he was in the year above me at school and uh, he... Um, he used to wear a parka with his nickname on the back and I just thought he was cool, you know. Uh, but his sister, I thought, was really something something special. And this record so reminds me of being in their house after, uh, after going to youth club and going back to their place to eat fish and chips and uh, listening to Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band for the first time. And uh, those first times of hearing, um, especially surrounded by such great friends, are so, so important. Um, the versions I've got, well, there's, there's the ones that, that could match the cover, this uh, capital versions, and 
stereo, a terrible stereo on those early Beatles albums, aren't they? You know, you, you kind of, if you turn down one channel, you lose either the vocals or, or the instruments. You wouldn't say this has a very high gloss anymore. This has been used a bit and uh, it's got, it's got a little bit of uh, wear, but I like to call these honest records. You know, yeah, it's, um, I tell you what, people have enjoyed the music on this and, and sometimes that means a record gets a little bit battle scarred. But as far as I'm concerned, doesn't matter how valuable the album is, um, they're, they're to be played. Uh, if, if you've got something that you're afraid to put a stylus on and uh, you have to wear a hazmat suit to play it, what's the point? What's the point? It's uh, another copy, also stereo, even more scratched up. But I tell you what, they play really well. And I've, I've talked about this in the introduction. In, in, in fact, I, I talk about this on uh, a video that I made of um, Led Zeppelin II, um, which is my first ever album I bought. And that's um, the original copy, which is 47 years old now. So, you know, if you'd been lugged around country to country, lots of different parties and lots of different kind of quality audio gear, then I think you'd be probably showing a few bruises and bumps and scratches now. That's just part of uh, the glory of uh, vintage uh, recordings. And then I've got um, an Apple copy. So just a, a green and a white Apple copy. And um, it's produced in England. Um, to be honest, I haven't even looked at this all that carefully. I, I, and I'm pretty sure this is an English pressing, so forgive me, uh, I'm, I haven't actually looked at this label terribly carefully. Uh, sometimes I'm really fussy about the labels and the matrix and all that kind of stuff. If I'm gonna buy something, wanting it to be a first pressing, then I'll really get into that stuff. But actually, for a lot of them, where I just want the music to be um, good and original and, and playable, then I'm, I'm quite happy. I don't care if it comes from Brass's lava, it really doesn't matter uh, as long as it sounds good. And then uh, a few weeks ago, I was in um, a grocery store, famous grocery store in England. If you're if you're um, not familiar with Sainsbury's, uh, but they actually sell uh, vinyl records, and I got this brand new, pristine copy of Sgt. Pepper. Now. It's an interesting thing when you go out and buy these new heavyweight vinyls remastered. I don't know how you feel about remastered. Um, there's a part of me that says, do I really want to hear anything that sounds different to the thing that takes me back to 1967? Um, anyway, um, I couldn't resist it and it wasn't terribly expensive. Um, so I bought it. And um, of course, it's it's immaculate and it's got you know they've been quite faithful to kind of reproduce the various kind of liners and you know it's all as it would have been with the original record if you've got um, an early or first pressing of Sgt Pepper that's what you'd get you'd get those kind of liners one thing I do like a lot that they've done this uh, is the slip file uh, sorry the uh, the liner I'm not sure I may have uh, provided this I tend to put my um, records in good quality um, liners and there it is in a nice heavy 180 gram fantastic label the iconic parlophone label I think the only one that's more famous than this is the one from please please me with this sort of gold really old-fashioned kind of coloring but hey Sergeant Pepper what, what can I say every track is a classic um, uh, a few things. If you get the chance to watch the recent um, documentary on BBC Two, uh, if you're in Britain, you can still get that on uh, BBC uh, iPlayer. Uh, it is so worth watching. It's absolutely fantastic. And it talks about uh, the, tr the Sgt Pepper tracks that weren't on there, Strawberry Fields and Penny Lane, and the history of those as well, which are just uh, amazing singles when they came out. And it, it still breaks my heart that the Beatles aren't still going. Look, we've got all these bands touring the world, and, you know, 40, 50 years on, you're wondering how, how many of them are alive, um, especially with, the, you know, the life they've led. But... Um, Sadly, the one band that I'd probably sell everything to go and see, can't see them anymore. Um, 
So uh, shame on me for not seeing them uh, all those years ago. But, you know, they did stop touring when I was just a, a little kid. So it's maybe understandable. I doubt if mum and dad would have sprung the cash or given me the time off to go and see them. Anyway, there we are. Sgt Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band reminds me of uh, Swindon and Steve and his sister Elaine and Youth Club and Fish and Chips and a just really, really fantastic experience to be listening to that for the first time. Subscribe, share, like, um, please uh, help us to uh, spread the news and to get those comments coming in. More important than any of those things is sharing your memories of these albums. I really want to read about them and see where that takes this whole experiment in talking about music from a memory point of view. Anyway, take care and always remember to stay in the groove.